spiritual. about 40 or 50 percent here. The other 50 to 60 percent is in an airplane. <laughs> Still recovering from jet lag. More than I thought it was. I think it has something to do with my one of those things that when you get older things don't they're not as resilient as they used to be, kind of thing. So, the topic that you would like to have us discuss this evening is sadhana, sadhana for parents and for children. Yeah? Yes. You have children. Yes, parents. What age? Three years. Three years. What's your expectation <laughs> sadhana for a three-year-old? Play. That's their sadhana. Right? Well, when I heard the topic, it, it was it's certainly an important and a, a nice topic. And... There's, there's different stages of Krishna consciousness and different levels. Of how people apply themselves from individual to individual or family to family. How they apply themselves to the, the process. So it's a little awkward to state sadhana for parents, sadhana for children, because it's different for different people and at different stages it's different. So I'm not really sure how to address the question other than just speaking in principles. And a few principles are um, from the parents' side, the, the, the commitment to sadhana should be something that one can maintain over a period of time, something that's stable, sustainable, and with the idea, it's a principle, that with the idea that when I carefully consider a, a, a standard of sadhana that I or we as parents can maintain, then you do that without going back, you know, without retreating. Although sometimes it, that may have to be done for different circumstances, but in general, maintain and be consistent over a period of time and then always be eager to make some further commitment, but cautious at the same time, and, and then when another level of commitment is made, then you maintain that and continue consistently over a period of time. So, incrementalism is the message, and being consistent. It's like, when, when some, whether they're parents or not, just beginning chanting, or beginning reading, or beginning the activities of Krishna consciousness. Same principle. Be consistent over some period of time and then increase and gradually increase. Bhakti Vinod Thakur expresses it um, not exactly sad enough for householders, but even a broader spiritual principle. Uh, one should always 
the striving to go the next step, and that's progress in Krishna consciousness. And he speaks conversely. If one doesn't, then that person is identified something similar to the yoga ladder, according to that position or that position. And they don't progress unless they're willing to let go of the previous and adopt the next. He didn't use those terms that I just expressed, but that, that's the concept that he, he teaches. Krishna consciousness should be steady and it should be progressive, both. So in terms of sadhana, that, that's a principle that applies for parents. Another principle that applies for anybody, parent or otherwise, is for consistency's sake as well as for quality's sake, morning time. And early morning is means before things get busy, the, the, the passion part of the day is the most goodness part of the day. And in that early morning hour, time of day, that's where sadhana is um, placed. And when there's some idea of how to increase quality, quality as well as quantity, that's one of the first places to look. And that is early morning. If I want to increase from X to 2X to 3X, chanting or reading or, or any kind of sadhana, it's the morning hours. And a, a rule, a common sense rule that goes along with that one is in order to increase sadhana done early in the morning, there's a certain principle that has to be adopted that's take rest early so that you can rise early, so you can um, perform your sadhana early, so it'll be quality and consistent. And that's just uh, a mode of goodness principle. It's an obvious, all these things are kind of obvious, but early to bed, early to rise. Is this saying common in India? Makes men healthy, wealthy, and wise. It's a mode of goodness principle. And you live your life more in the mode of goodness than being steady and consistent and quality in sadhana is enhanced. Then, you know, there, there's the next position to go to is what about when there's just some circumstances that keep one up late, like Krishna Janmashtami, or something that's just not so flexible. You just stay up later than plan A, then you need plan B, and plan B principle for, this is now sadhana for parents, is you have plan B, but don't make plan B plan A. <laughs> don't stay up late regularly, stay, you know, take rest at a reasonable time, or a, ideally a fixed time. And something that really helps with plan A is um, deity worship, or if not deity worship, regulated activity for Mangalarti. And um, when there's regu one of the one of the strengths of temple life, for those who are very fortunate to have had experience of temple life in their early stages of Krishna consciousness, it, it automatically regulation is fixed because Mangalarti is every t same time every morning. And when you take rest so that you can attend Mangalarti same time every morning, built into your day is a certain period of sadhana time where there isn't 
unless you're a cook or a worshiper of a deity, there isn't something going on. You just, you have your sadhana. So, similarly for householders in your home. The Mangalarti doesn't need to be an extensive Mangalarti. It can be, depending upon family to family. But at least it, it, in principle, I, ideally, it's at a time that works for what the family's needs are. And it's right on time. Ideally, it's right on time. In families, it can be within a range of time, but ideally, it's same time. So that assists in the mode of goodness, feature of regulation in life. And then the, if, the, if the morning is regulated, the rest of the day can become more regulated and one's life becomes more in the mode of goodness. That's good. Mode of goodness is good. It's not transcendence, but it's good. And it, it helps in quality and consistent sadhana. Another principle about sadhana for parents <coughs> is if there's some hope that um, the, the children in the family will perform sadhana, it's if they see their parents consistently engaging in sadhana. So in other words, it's just, it's, um, it's not a guarantee, but it's um, it helps a lot following the example of parents children may, may wish to follow <clears throat> then sadhana for children from, from the perspective of parents regarding their children uh, identify areas of sadhana that the children may have a greater liking for. Maybe it's attending our team. Maybe it's performing. Maybe they have their own little altar if they see their parents do. I see that in lots of places in families. From the example of parents, the children then may want to have their own altar or participate in the family altar and have some service that's they understand it's to be taken seriously and done respectfully. It's not another type of play, it's worship. And so then the message is conveyed. If, when the message is conveyed properly, then a reverential sense, not just a playful sense, can be adopted by the child. And some children are more inclined in other ways of sadhana, some like to read, some like to listen, some like to watch. And some like to chant. You know, commonly, not always, I still would say it's not uncommon. I've run into many cases where children like a lot of things about sadhana except for one thing. Chanting. I'm bored. <laughs> it's hard. So, a wrong thing to do is to try to impose or force the children to do something. That's a mistake. You, you can't do that. Philosophically, you can't do that anyways. And practically speaking, it turns into resentment. It, it, um, a feeling or emotion that disliked it simply because it was forced upon one it makes it more difficult in the later stage to be consistent with, ch with uh, chanting. So better find activities that are in the devotional practice broad category and things that children like to do, encourage it. Do things together as a family, as a family sit together and read together and have kirtan together and worship together and even chant japa together. 
And when it's done as a family, then it's it's easier. Still, maybe you like not their favorite activity, but it's easier because it's a family activity. There's a a Christian singing. I didn't hear about it till I became a devotee, but anyway, a family that prays together stays together. So to help encourage family values, spiritual family values, do things together as a family without forcing but encouraging. Aside from, um, another principle is, aside from what happens in the, f in the family, if in the community there's somebody, commonly a lady or a few ladies, that really like and seem to have a gift for working with children and having Krishna conscious activities together, with the, amongst the children, that's a wonderful way to bring about practices of sadhana with children, because they like it. They like it when they do things with other children that they like to do. And if there's a an adult that brings that out of the children, it's fantastic. There's the the Sunday school kind of fixture in our communities, but there's not just Sunday school, there's the, the, um, a principle or a practice of um, working with children, just like right now, like, you know, when we have home gatherings, one procedure is the children are somewhere else doing what children do, whatever, you know, that is, having bouncing on something or watching something or playing something or, you know, having it. They like it. They come and they just, they look forward to coming to program because then they can play. Then there's another where they're as important as the adults. They're just young. And, but they're in, in, as an essential part of our community as the, as the adults are. And so if there's somebody gifted, that can work with the children and do things together, then they learn a lot and they'll want to go to the programs not just so they can go somewhere and bounce around and, and, and play with their friends, but there's activities that they really like because somebody knows how to bring that out of them. And that, that's a, there, there's a sacrifice involved that sacrifices whoever's doing that, somebody or their little, their little team of somebody's, um, they're not attending the adult activity in the program or at the temple or at whatever gatherings are going on. But on the other hand, it's very rewarding and satisfying for persons who are Brahminical, they're educators, they like working with children, and it's, it's a, it's a Brahminical strength. And different individuals have different styles of doing that, but when, it, when it's there, it's fantastic, as far as sadhana for children is concerned. When it's done on that, that when those, I have a liking for that model because what I've seen is um, children then have more of a tendency of, of their own volition 
to want to do devotional activities or sadhana in the home or in their day-to-day -day life because it becomes part of uh, the culture of growing up in a Krishna conscious family. It's not just the family, it's their, their friends and their friends are doing things together because it's because there's pers some persons from the doesn't even have to be adult it can be a youth there's one I won't give the name of the place but there's one place where um, a young girl maybe 12 years old 12, 13 years old it's kind of like her thing Okay, it's program time, and there goes this 12, 13-year-old, and they, she takes them off, with the, and, the, and all the kids love to go. It's like, they just follow her. And she, I don't know exactly what she does, but whatever she does, everyone comes back smiling. We don't hear a bunch of noise, just that there's some kind of orderly activity, and it's just natural for her, and... The kids learn, and they, they like doing Krishna conscious activities together. It helps a lot. Is that what you're looking for? Do you have some particular thought or question on this topic in your mind? Thank you so much, Mother. Um, just, uh, I feel that developing our own sadhana and uh, also raising kids uh, with that kind of mood and liking, that's, that gets a little bit challenging at times. Well, life has its challenges. It's miserable if you don't. How oh, there's there's an answer. It 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 commitment, the uh, principle based commitment. It, it's the way it's how how I should lead my life. I mean, you know, keeping your house clean. You could not keep leave the house clean. It'd be easier. In one sense, but you know, it's just, just you can't do that. And then, so there's levels of cleanliness. So you just do it because it's the right thing to do. It elevates consciousness, although it takes some time and can be troubling. It's more troubling to not. I'm just speaking simple terms. to balance things of life, especially persons, well, not, as one's, I was going to say, especially for those persons that are uh, concerned about a, a quality, a standard of quality in life, then responsible people seem to have more things to do. It seems to go together. Responsible person is given more things to do, and then they have more things to manage. Then it becomes more of a challenge to balance the, the many things. But that's part of responsible life. It's, it's the privilege of those who are responsible to have more things to balance. They, they're entitled to that challenge. And a, a, a principle that keeps it going is the core, the, the sadhana core. Because without sadhana core, then there isn't spiritual strength. And without spiritual strength, then it's not a life of responsibility. 
and things fall apart. It becomes, you, you spend much more time doing damage control of things that are falling apart than, than uh, investing time in keeping the core together that gives strength to everything else in life. But that's a life of responsibility. It requires strength, but it gives strength. to do with the modes of nature. When there's uh, a strong amount of passion in life, then it's get things, do things, achieve things, accomplish things. And when that mode of passion is strong, it chips away, at, it diminishes the influence of goodness. is the mode of goodness is the maintaining force, and the mode of passion is the expanding, growing, increasing, owning, owning controlling, doing. So it's a mode of nature question, in some ways. Now, a mode of goodness person may do many things in their day-to-day -day life, but they do them with a different principle and purpose, and so the focus remains. And, you know, it, using the word that you use, the balance, it, because you're not going to not be clean. It takes time. Okay, there's some time away from, etc. It, it takes time to do sadhana. It takes time to have a mangalarti. It takes, and I got to do stuff. It's not like, Therefore, you know, a, a, a person that wants to be elevated, they have to not have goals that are, you know, but the goals don't supersede the quality of goodness, and then it certainly doesn't supersede spiritual practice, sadhana. Rather, it's that, that spiritual practice and sadhana are, are the irreplaceable and essential means. It can even be pragmatic. It'll help me achieve what I want to achieve. And without it, I won't be able to achieve what I want to achieve. I just had this discussion with somebody that's um, spreading Krishna consciousness in China. And um, one of the persons is a, a, a very accomplished yoga teacher. And it's just, and, the, and the, the Chinese government is starting to do, you know, the, the iron f hand is closing. And, you know, our devotees don't know how tight it's going to get. So they're having to modify their strategies for reaching out. So one of the ways is emphasis on meditation, mantra meditation, but emphasis on meditation. And then incrementally seeing, anyway, without the rest of it. So one of the persons is this yoga teacher, very accomplished yoga teacher. And the yoga teacher likes chanting because she finds, when she chants, then she, can, she finds solutions to problems. It's, it's, you know, utilitarian or pragmatic, not spiritual. I chant because it helps me take care of my problems. But it's true. Without it, we'll have more problems.
mold our lives in such a way that we can always remember Krishna. You may have to adjust some of the worldly goals or worldly things so that I can have that spiritual core to my life. And, and at, at the progressively at different stages of life, I, I f I'll feel that I'm progressing and at the end of life, I'll be closer to where I want to be than lamenting, oh, I didn't make that emphasis during my life and so here I am. Bereft of spiritual core. That, that's very sad. How about your good wife? You have something to add to this? Your, this is your chosen topic. No, Maharaj, I have to it, it is challenging at times because you are trying to uh, practice your devotional, you are trying to practice your sadhana, mm. and then your child needs your attention. So as a mother, I always have that, mm. uh, you know, confusion, or sometimes I'm like, or what? Like, you know, I can't give time to my child. And if I'm, I'm chant, and this in particular happens when I don't chant in the mornings. So I kind of even know what should, I, what should be done. Chant before but, he wakes up. Eh? Sorry? Chant before he wakes up. Yes. <laughs> but then at night, if I'm chanting, and if he's needing my attention, and then he goes to his father, and then sometimes I feel bad that, you know, I'm not giving him enough time. And that's what he 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 thought probably perceives me as someone who's not having time. And that's why he's going to his father. I don't know. Maybe it's part of being a mother. I have so many thoughts going on in my mind sometimes. <laughs> it's the blessing of being a mother. <laughs> what would, where would the world be without mothers? Yes. We'd have a. We wouldn't have a world. <laughs> So the, the, the motherly affection and the, the feelings that go with that, it's, it's fantastic. Don't lose it. Keep it. And, and as a, so this is just a comment on what you just said. Um, two things. Discipline yourself or become regulated enough so that more times than otherwise, you're rising early, chanting early, and you're there when the child needs you. And second is family. It's not um, your, your, your negligence as a mother if, because you have to set a standard for the family, for yourself, which means for the family. So in the family affair, the child may go to the father instead of to the mother. And it's just that part of family. That we would say it the other way. You're neglecting your duty as a mother if you don't have that spiritual su substance in your, in your life to give to your child. When you're giving time to your child, that spiritual substance is missing. That's, you know, shame on you. <laughs> Or, you know, you can be faulted for that mm -hmm. rather than faulted for you're not there when you're doing your spiritual practice because circumstance was that particular morning and then your day was busy and now it's in the evening and now the child is going to another member of the family besides mother because they need some affection and attention. You have to have that spiritual core because that's part of your, it's part of the spiritual perspective or spiritual component of being a mother, a quality mother. If you're giving leadership, spiritual leadership, to the dependent, it's not bad, it's good. You're giving to your child that way instead of not that way. And not that way is incomplete. 
in the end, a long haul, the result is not going to be satisfying for anybody in the family or out of the family. It's 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 spiritualizing the 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 feelings of motherhood. Don't it's not so not kill the spirit of motherhood. See, be, that's this part of being what being a mother is. Without it, I, it's, I'm I'm negligent in a deeper way than just spending time. And then so then it falls on the family. So hopefully he got up early and did his son, and then he can give time too. So then so then you're you're you're, t you're a family, and the child can then understand this is that's the model. Where it's a family over you know, the long haul, and the, that's the glue that holds the family together. Is we're a family, we're committed to one another. other thoughts on this topic? Yeah. Um, Marv, I just wanted to understand about the association. Um, maybe in the home we can sort of keep the child safe and keep ourselves safe from bad association because the sadhana is very strong and it, the routine is fixed and we have a schedule to follow. Except when it's the few days of the week when we go to the temple and the other children... There's all the kinds children, of standards. Yeah, all kinds of standards. They have diff the children have different standards yeah. there. Yes. And then the child may be learning bad habits even from devotee children. And we can't cut out that association until he feels deprived. So how do we balance that without the child getting influenced by any bad habits? Well easier said than done there's a, a, a Gurukul teacher shared a, 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 an, an adage that Gurukul teachers have children are like water and water seeks the lowest level you've heard that one before water goes down so with there's children come together and one child is down, children have a tendency to do what the, the down child does. And they go back to the parents and say, you know, they're doing this, why we can't do this? So, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things. Um, the, the, the answer that I have doesn't always work, but if if children understand in the family, if a, a child not only under, not only understands this is what we do as a family, this is a value that we have, and um, we we hold these values. Something that's additionally helpful is why. And if if somebody, a child, goes to the temple and sees something that's just not. I'm not comfortable with. I mean, it's going to happen later in life anyway, when there, there's more freedom and more independence and decisions are going to be made about doing this and not doing this, or doing that and not doing that. So, why? It's, it starts in the home, and if... if um, you know, part of growing up, whether it's in the temple or out into the community or in school or in the world, or decisions are going to be made. And if there's not a good understanding of why, this is a standard that I wish to keep, or our family keeps, and I wish to uphold what our family wishes to uphold. 
if there isn't a clear understanding of why, it, it's uh, more vulnerable. no guarantee from parents' side that if they have a, a value in the family and they have gone through the exercise of why, that their child is going to choose the why instead of, you know, well, why not? There's no guarantee. But there, there's strength in understanding why. So, uh, uh, I know it's difficult as a parent uh, to leave your kid uh, in that Gurukul system where he's getting educated um, inside temple school education system. Um, and of course, we are here in US. And now, I think there are a couple of uh, Gurukul schools in Florida also. Uh, so, even if as a parent, I cannot send him for the whole duration of to get to get him the education end to end, but can we uh, still, is there a recommendation that we can still, you know, leave him for some time and then he'll get better in his devotional life? Well, schools in Florida, I may be mistaken, none of them are ashram schools, they're all day schools. So, I know family that, um, they moved to, to Florida to be part of that, I forget the name of the school. What's the name of the school? They, they had, there's like multiple schools, but there's one that's really, really, really good. So he moved from one city to, to Alachua. There's no job for him in Alachua, but so he, you know, four days of the week, he's somewhere else doing his job so that his child can attend this wonderful school. Um, it's the, the one that was advertised in, or, or promoted during the, the ISKCON 50 video, that school, whatever that one is. And the, you know, the principal of the school was speaking, and so it's, it's really a wonderful school. But it's not, he didn't send his child to go to in, enroll in the ashram. They don't do that in, in Florida. And um, as much as Prabhupada wanted Guru Kula, ashram based Guru Kula, uh, it's, diff it's difficult to maintain a school where the, the opportunity for abuse of the children doesn't enter in. Well, yeah, I, there, there, are, there, there are leaders in our organization that would say it far stronger than I'm saying it right now. I would never recommend that anybody send anybody to an ashram based guru pool. The track record is horrible. And, and even when there's, you know, s strong vigilance, it, you know, it can still happen, and it can strong can happen means it sometimes does happen, and so <coughs> better, better model is a guru kula that's day school based. But it's not exactly guru kula, it's but it's guru. We can say guru kula. It's 
school for devotee children with devotee children curriculum and but you know at night they go home to their parents and they're with their parents the parents send them or bring them to school and back to home at night that's the so I don't know if you're ready to move to Florida <laughs> So then it narrows down options. Anything else? It's a very specific topic here this evening. Let's have some more kirtan. I didn't know you could sing so nicely. favorite kirtan singer in the group or no? Why don't you sing briefly? <laughs> 